Okay, we're going to look at a video here where we're going to find equations for a tangent plane and a normal line to a couple of different surfaces at specific points. So the key here is remembering the idea that a gradient of a function is perpendicular to level curves or level surfaces. In this case, we have surfaces. So the key idea though is that I need to think of these surfaces as level surfaces of some function. And remember that a level surface is the set of all points x, y, z where you have a function output that is constant. So the key here is being able to think of these surfaces that I'm given as level surfaces of some function of x, y, z equal to a constant. So for this first one here, I don't have an f of x, y, z denoted, but you can see that I have this equation involving x, y, and z equal to a constant. So in essence, I do have this situation. It's just a matter of recognizing that that's what I have. So here, my function of x, y, and z would be what I have here on the left. And that is equal to 12. So that is a level surface of my function x, y, and z. So in essence, I introduced another variable, an output variable, f of x, y, z, that was not initially part of this problem so that I could think about this as a level surface of some other function. We will actually use that strategy several times between now and the end of the semester, where we introduce this extra variable that somehow makes the problem a little bit easier. All right, so uh, if this is my function, then I just need to calculate the gradient vector. So that is the vector of my partial derivatives, partial derivative of f with respect to x, and partial derivative of f with respect to y, and partial derivative of f with respect to z. And I will want to evaluate that gradient vector at my point to 1, negative 2. So when I put in my values for x, y, and z, I will have 4, 8, and negative 4. All right, so any scalar multiple, any non-zero scalar multiple of this vector would also be perpendicular to my level surface. So really what I'm interested in here from this gradient vector is this property of being perpendicular or normal to my level surface. So any non-zero scalar, scalar multiple of this would work as well. So for example, 1 to negative 1 would be another vector that I could use. I'm going to go ahead and just use this one in my answer here. All right, so one part of this problem is recognizing this property about gradient vectors being perpendicular to level surfaces and how to think about this as a level surface. And then the other is recalling some formulas that you learned previously about writing equations for a plane and a line in three-dimensional space. So equation for a plane, uh, you're going to have the components of the vector times x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught. So I'm just going to go ahead and write this down rather than writing the formula down. Um, but I'm going to have my components of my vector that is perpendicular to this plane. So if this vector is perpendicular to the surface, it would also be perpendicular to the plane that's tangent to the surface. So 4, and then x minus the x-coordinate of a point on the plane. So these values here would give us coordinates of a point on the plane. And then plus 8 times y minus 1, and then plus negative 4, or minus 4, times z minus negative 2, and then equal to 0. So I can go ahead and clean that up if I want. You can distribute through, combine some like terms, rearrange some terms if you want. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like that. And then the normal line to the surface, so imagining our surface, this first one here is an ellipsoid. So you can imagine the surface, you've got a point on the surface, a vector perpendicular to the surface. 
you've written equation for a plane tangent to the surface, and then you also want an equation for a line perpendicular to that surface. So that line would go along that vector that we just found here. And so remembering how to write parametric equations for a line in three space, we're going to have x equals x naught, where x naught is a point on the line, two plus the component of a vector that goes along the line in the x direction, four times t, y equals one plus eight times t, and z equals negative two minus four times t. And remember that you could have used some other vector that's along the same vector, so your answer might look a little bit different and still be correct if it's still perpendicular to the surface at that particular point. Okay, so the basic idea here about gradient vector, thinking about a function of three variables, thinking about your surface as a function of three variables, using that gradient vector, and then just recalling these things that we did earlier this semester. All right, so the next example is pretty similar, but there's an important distinction that you need to be a little bit careful about when you do that. I need to think about a function of x, y, z that is equal to a constant. And so in this second equation, because I have my x and y terms and my z term on different sides of the equation, I'm going to need to do a little rearranging first in order to think about that as a function of three variables. So for this one, um, I'm going to go ahead and subtract z from both sides of the equation. You have some choices about how you want to do that algebra, but I'm going to go ahead and subtract z from both sides of the equation. So I will have 0 equals x squared plus y squared minus z minus 12. I can treat this as my f of x, y, z, or I could add 12 to both sides. It doesn't matter what constant you have that function equal to, it just needs to be equal to a constant. So I'm going to just use this, f of x, y, z is x squared plus y squared minus z minus 12, and the constant that my function will be equal to is 0. Uh, you could add 12 to both sides and have a slightly different function and have it equal to 12. Notice, notice that the gradient vector that you get would be the same whether you have 12 on one side of the equation or the other. Okay, so the gradient vector, uh, I will have 2x, 2y, and negative 1 for my partial derivative with respect to z. I need to evaluate that at my point, 3, 2, 1. So when I plug in my point here, I will have 6, 4, negative 1. And then I can just go ahead and use that to write my equations of my plane and line tangent to this surface and normal to this surface. This surface, by the way, is a paraboloid. Uh, you don't necessarily need the graph of that to think about that, but this one is a paraboloid. And so what I'm going to be finding here is the equation of a plane tangent to that paraboloid at a particular point and a line normal to that paraboloid at that particular point. All right, so again, just recalling your equation for the plane, uh, using my components of my vector for the coefficients here and my point for the point in our equation, uh, we'll have 6 times x minus 3 plus 4 times y minus 2 plus negative 1 or minus 1 times z minus 1. And remember that for that equation of that plane, you need that to be equal to 0. And then parametric equations for the line, x equals x naught, our point on the line, plus x component of the vector times t, y equals y naught, 2, plus y component of the vector, 4 times t, and z equals z naught, 1, plus the z component of the vector, minus 1, times t. All right, so there are the equations for the line perpendicular to that paraboloid at that point. So these are just direct applications of the gradient vector. The big trick here is thinking about this as a function of three variables, and so sometimes that means you have to rearrange your variables a little bit. All right, try some homework problems like that.